If you are on estrogen hormone replacement, let's say you're on estrogen patch or an estrogen gel or cream, how do you know it's working? Maybe your symptoms are better, but maybe you're thinking to yourself, should it be a higher dose? Should it be a lower dose? I don't know if the patch is really working for me. Maybe I should switch to a gel or vice versa. I'm on a gel and I'm thinking about using a patch because gosh, that's so much easier. Well, stick with me because I'm gonna go through a new study from February, 2025 that talks about the variation women can experience when they're using a patch or a gel. And it's crazy to me, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Honestly, it's called pharmacokinetics and it's how your hormone, when you, when you apply or, or take a hormone, acts in your body. And a lot of things can get in the way or make it not work the way that you were hoping for, quite honestly. So get a pen, get paper, get ready to take some notes because if you've been really kind of questioning your hormone, your estrogen delivery or your estrogen dose, and you're not really sure what to do, I got you. We're going to talk about this study and I'm going to talk to you about things that get in the way. February 2025, a whole bunch of researchers looked at over a thousand women, 1,508 women, both perimenopausal and postmenopausal. They were using estrogen patches in gels. And I have the study right here. So you're going to see in some points, I'm going to be looking down so I can read it. So I under can get you the information directly. They found across all users and all the ages they were looking at, there was some pretty significant variance in what the level of estrogen was when they blood tested. So basically they took all these women that were on a patch or a gel at various doses and they had them get testing to see when she went on the patch or gel, is it what was expected? Like for example, everyone who was on the lowest patch is an example, the lowest dose patch. Now remember, there are a lot of different patches out there, but the lowest dose, no matter who the company was that made it, was everybody about the same blood level, as opposed to somebody who was on the highest dose patch, that whole group, was everybody about the same blood level. And they found out, no, it turns out not at all. Let's talk about blood levels. First of all, you do not have to have a blood test to determine if you're perimenopausal or postmenopausal. Perimenopause and postmenopause are not a disease, first and foremost. However, you don't actually have to have a blood test to determine if you're there. We, we go off of uh, periods and symptoms. In some cases though, if you're listening to this and you don't have a uterus or you've had an ablation or you have a progestin IUD, so you actually don't bleed, but your ovaries work, you think, then we will do a blood test. We will commonly do a blood test called an FSH, a follicle stimulating hormone, and see if it's high and if it high and indicates you're probably postmenopausal. But we can use blood testing to determine if the hormone that you're on, the estrogen that you're on, is at a range specific to prevent bone loss. We don't really have a lot of studies to, at all to show ranges for brain health or heart health or gosh, collagen or hair growth and when it, as it comes to your estrogen, but we do have studies on the prevention of bone loss. So if you get your blood drawn and you're looking at estradiol to prevent bone loss, you wanna be between 60 and 150 picograms per ml, 60 and 150. That's what this study says. A lot of the research out there commonly will just say above 60. Once you're above 60, you're preventing bone loss. So if you have a high risk for osteoporosis, you're osteopenic, it runs in your family, you're very small bone, people are concerned, you're probably getting some blood tests to determine this. So this study says, ideally the women on estrogen patches or gels were between 60 and 150. If you were low, subtherapeutic is what they called it, you were below 54. You were below 54 picograms per ml. This is interesting because a lot of postmenopausal estradiol ranges are honestly below 20 or below 30. So to them, subtherapeutic was a little bit above the postmenopausal range, but not high enough that you would be preventing uh, bone loss. This is important because for some women, their hot flashes go away or their brain fog gets better or their mood is exponentially better. But they were like, ah, but some things aren't really great. Like, how do I know that it's working? I'd, I'd like to do these tests. So this study was doing blood tests based on the bone marker. Basically, in the end, what they found was that there was a ton of variance across every category. This meant, as I said earlier, the lowest dose and the highest dose were all over the board. If you were on the highest dose patch, your blood test may have been subtherapeutic, below 54. And you're on the highest dose patch. If you're on the highest dose gel, you might have been sub 54, below 54 on a blood test. And on the flip side, you could be on the lowest dose patch and easily be above 60. 
picograms per ml. You were totally preventing bone loss, which is fantastic. So the researchers published this, and I find it really fascinating because of all the women who are getting put on estrogen therapy, we don't really do follow up. In fact, a lot of experts feel don't test at all. Just make sure that your symptoms are going away. I'm more in the camp of like, well, I do know the bone markers. Let's at least try to reduce bone loss. And now I know there's a ton of variability. Now, the researchers were very clear that a lot of things can get in the way. And this is where it pertains to you. If you're listening, you use an estrogen patch or a gel, and you're not actually sure if it's working, you can request testing to see what your level is. This study used what's called an immunoassay, which is the most common way that hormones are tested, an immunoassay. Unfortunately, it's a good but not great instrument to test hormones on. And they know this, everyone knows this, the lab work world knows this, research world knows this. What we would prefer people use is called a mass spec. Mass spec instruments are much more expensive, that's why a lot of labs haven't made the conversion to buy them, because they're like six figures at a minimum to buy a mass spec machine. This particular study used immunoassay, but they used the same immunoassay that they calibrated for every single person. So at least they were very consistent with that. What they point out is that when you are doing a patch or a gel, they're very aware, and I'm gonna read this right from the study, different estradiol formulations and brands have distinctive physiochemical properties that influence the rate at which estrogen is absorbed, which means you and your best friend could be on 0.5 on a patch, but you get it from two different companies and therefore maybe the delivery is a little bit different or the adhesive is a little bit different. They talk about biological factors such as age, ethnicity, and differences in skin adiposity, so how much fat is in the skin or just below the skin, of course, hydration, blood flow ab ab ability. Think about if you, let's say you apply your gel to your um, thighs. Do you have a lot of blood flow there? Let's say you apply a patch to your belly. Do you feel like you have a lot of blood flow there or your low back? So that's what they mean by blood flow. They talk about temperature. Um, all of those things influence absorption and bioavailability. Up to 20% of patch users report local skin reactions. They're maybe sensitive or re reactive to the adhesion. And that may cause a reduction in like firm skin to patch adhesion, which could then impact how well it's being absorbed into the body. So if you're using a patch and every time you're rotating and moving the patch around, there's like red spots or it's kind of itchy or, you know, it looks a little dermatitis -y in each spot, that may actually impact how you do or don't absorb the hormone out of there, the estradiol out of there. Where you apply can also be really important. I have been reading so many comments on social media from women who said, oh yes, I was taught to apply my patch or my gel in the front, like my lower belly area, and I switched it to my back or upper buttock area, and I feel so much better. I feel like it's absorbing. So they're not doing formal testing, but a lot of their symptoms are improving, or vice versa. Women maybe are doing a gel and they're applying it on their thighs, and they were finding that that wasn't working, so they switched to do inner arm. I'm a much bigger fan, personally, of inner arm for the uh, estrogen and the gel or the cream, the spray that's out there um, for the inner arm. I want that thin skin, but not all women know to do this. And now hearing me talk about this, if you're just feeling like, ah, this isn't, I don't feel like this is quite right. This could be better. Location, location, location might be a reason. Here's another thing that can get in the way. Washing the skin within an hour of gel application has been shown to reduce the serum estradiol concentrations by up to 22%. This means if you get up in the morning and apply your gel, and then let's say you go eat breakfast, get your coffee, get going, and then you go hop in the shower, and it's been under an hour, then it's possible you are reducing the amount of estrogen getting into your system. Now, also, because estrogen, once it's in your system, it gets utilized, it gets metabolized, which means broken down, and then it gets excreted. So they do make a mention of distribution, how estrogen gets moved around your body, Metabolism and excretion contribute to variation in serum estradiol concentrations. For example, you may be a super fast metabolizer of estrogen. You make it in, it's out of your body, like a race car, vroom, there it goes. So your lab levels may be low because you metabolize it, get rid of it very quickly. Whereas let's say your best friend or your sister 
they hold on to their estrogen. They don't metabolize it very well. They don't excrete it very quickly. And so it sort of circulates and they don't need as high of a level because they don't break it down that fast. This particular study did totally say in their strengths and limitations that it was predominantly done in British white women who were able to afford their hormones. So we don't have a lot of great data while they mention ethnicity, um, race as, you know, uh, blood, skin, things like that, they didn't actually get to test that. So obviously more studies and with more, much more diversity need to come. I am grateful for this group for at least getting the ball rolling on the differences between patch and gel and absorption. So now we need to expand this out and include a whole lot of people and see what's going on when it comes to absorption. If we're going to continue to do, you know, look at blood testing, especially as we get more information about, is there a blood test level that shows or documents improved brain health, heart health, whatever our kind of health that we have going on, um, you know, musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause, like a certain level, most women do better, feel better, reduces the risk of frozen shoulder. We don't have that data. That data is actively being worked on, but it's going to take a lot of women, a lot of money, and a lot of time. Right now, all we have is the bone data, and we're doing the best we can with it. One of the last things we do know is that women over 50 on the patch were the poorest absorbers. It doesn't mean if you're listening to this and you're over 50 and on the patch, you should freak out at all. If it applies to you, if you're thinking, oh, that's me, I'm over 50, I have the patch, I don't feel like it's working. I keep asking for something else. I keep telling them I might need a higher dose. You are welcome to show them this study and say, hey, is it possible I can get blood tested? Is it possible I can switch to um, a gel or a cream or the spray that acts as a cream that gets rubbed into the arm? Like there's other mechanisms that we can, we can modulate out there. So I wanted to break this down for you because I think it's so important to know that hormones are important. The delivery method, we have a few different options, but you are an individual person. So if your skin, the temperature, your blood flow, the location, the amount of fat in the area or not, um, whether you jump in the shower afterwards or not, like all these things can impact it. The other thing we're going to learn more, and this study also points out, is that they were evaluating data after the fact. And it's possible some women, even though they were supposed to be applying their hormone regularly, were not. So they, we, we, they had no way to know this because they were evaluating, like I said, after the fact. This is why it's important for you if you are using hormones and your practitioner is doing follow-up types of testing, such as a blood test for estradiol, that you use your hormone and be mindful of like, if you've forgotten or you forgot to take it on vacation with you or you've been waiting for the pharmacy to fill it, maybe don't go get a blood test done then. <laughs> maybe get back on it before you do any kind of blood testing or at least let your practitioner know, hey, I've been waiting for the pharmacy. I haven't, I've been without it for a week or two or I went on vacation and I ran out and uh, you know, I haven't had it for a couple of weeks. And so uh, I'm gonna wait on the blood test and, and make sure I'm wearing it because that can of course also impact the study, but so can everything else. And I don't ever want you to think to yourself, I don't think this is working. I don't think this gel or this cream or this spray cream or this patch, like, like what is going on? You're not crazy. A lot of pharmacokinetics are at play. You are an individual person and you can bring this study and prove it so. I want you to get the help that you need. I want you to get the patch or the gel or the cream or whatever you need for you. Also know these things can change with time. So you maybe have started out with the gel, found that is not working over time and switched to a patch. Maybe you started with the patch and you don't like the adhesive at all, switch to a different brand. It doesn't necessarily mean that that, like all patches are dead to you. Maybe just that brand has the wrong adhesive for you. See if you can switch to a different kind. So now you can see there's a lot of play that we can do to modify, to really individualize the care for you. So you're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna to continue to bring studies like these, tips and topics like these, as I know hormones can feel like herding cats and I'm here to help.